And then what are like some potential limitations, right? We've talked about some of the benefits that this is, it sounds, you know, there's tax advantages here. There's diversification potential. Mm -hmm. What are some of the limitations of investing through an IRA versus just, I have this money, you know, in a money market and I'm going to liquidate it. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it, depending on your age, it's capital that you can't exactly access for, for a number of years. You know, I'm in you know my mid thirties, and anything that I'm doing in my IRA, I can't really touch until I'm over fifty nine and a half without getting penalized on it. So, you know, if you're looking for um, you know some liquidity, you know, near term liquidity, it's not going to be the vehicle for you. If you know if you're in your thirties, forties, maybe even your fifties. So um, that that's one thing, Tom, that comes to mind. Um, and it might be the only thing that comes to mind as we kind of go through the conversation, maybe some other limitations come up, but we, you know, we touched on those disqualified persons who you can invest with, you're limited there. And then again, accessing that capital, you know, being able to realize those gains or, or at least, you know, have that liquidity that comes from that, that gain in, in a given deal. You're not going to be able to touch that until, you know, you're, you're of a certain age, 59 and a half or older in most cases. All right. So let's break this down here. So you have, uh, for our listeners, there's, there's these opportunities here. We kind of almost put them in buckets. You have, uh, if you hold your own IRA, you can, you can, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about what they can do with that. And then there's, if you are trying to get other people to invest in things, you could go to people that have an IRA and get them to, uh, pull that out. So kind of starting with the first one of, uh, if you have an IRA right now, you know, say one of our listeners is, uh, working a W2 job, uh, investing on the side, but trying to grow their portfolio. Walk us through kind of what what their opportunities were. If I came to you right now and say I got an IRA, I want to invest in real estate. Like, what, what, what should I be looking at? What should I be considering? Yeah. So, uh, you know, what kind of structure are you looking at? Are you looking to purchase, uh, you know, a, a single family home and landlord out of the IRA? Are you looking to be an, uh, you know, an LP in a, in a in a syndicated offering? Are you looking to uh, uh, lend? You know, because all of those things can be done. So. Um, you know, in my role and in and, and, and the self-directed IRA world, we're not fiduciaries. We're not here to tell you what to do or, or you know, what's a good investment or what's not. We're, we're very passive. We're not a fiduciary in this role. So, Mark, if you came to me, I'd be like, well, let's talk about what, you, what you're seeing in the market. What are you looking to, um, what are you looking to get into? And so um, I, I think it, it's really led by the investor's um, uh, desire or, or, you know, whatever they're looking at from an opportunity perspective. You know, are, are they looking at a piece of property? Do they know somebody that's raising money? And it's not until a deal is actually on, you know, within the realm of their possibility that they want to start making moves to use their IRA towards it. But the biggest thing that you want to keep in mind, Mark, is, yeah, do I have an IRA today? And if I don't, do I have an old 401k that I can roll over into an IRA to use the self-directed vehicle? 